So the first rule is to manage your execution tree. So what is an execution tree? Well, the first thing we're going to have to talk about is what it, uh, the concept of asynchronous and synchronous data flow components. Um, basically, um, a synchronous data flow component is something that it can pass data through the uh, data flow task. Over here, the data flow task um, without stopping or slowing it up. So, for instance, there are some of them that are definitely synchronous. A sort a data flow task is a synchronous task, and that just makes sense. If you had data flowing in from your source and you asked integration services to sort it, it has to have all the data before it can sort it and pass it along. What that means is that uh, for each execution tree, um, oh, oh, well, let me back up a little. This is this is an execution tree. It's from where it's beginning of one asynchronous to the to the uh, final point where another asynchronous. There's these two: the lookup task and the derived uh, derived column output are uh, synchronous tasks. That's one execution tree, one buffer. If you if this other task over here has two, so it goes from here. Uh, there's one here. This union all is an eight. It's an asynchronous semi-block um, task. And so what that means is that from here to here, it's using one buffer. And then down here, it has to move the data into another buffer. And then it goes on as well. Each one of these execution trees also uses individual threads. So you need to be careful about that so that you're not overwhelming your server and using too many threads. So as I said before, we got one that's using synchronous and another that's asynchronous. Uh, let's see if I can this up quickly. Okay, okay. So, very straightforward data flow tasks. Data comes down. It's using a lookup transformation. The lookup transformation is using full cache, meaning it's going to use, it's going to load all the lookup information completely into memory. Now, I'm just doing a simple lookup here, with location ID and location. Just get it on the fly. Um, but there's only a hundred records in here, um, so it's uh, actually I think there's only 50 records in this particular. Um, so it's a pretty small set. But it's, it, it does a lookup here, it joins them, and we grab the the location description and pass it into along down the stream. Um, now what's going on here is uh, I'm doing the union all, which should slow this down a bit. Now, of course, the the, uh, the big danger of any sort of live demos is that my machine might behave differently than what I expect. So we'll just see really fast what happens here. So as we go down in here, we should see some data flowing through. I've got 5 million records in my employee source that I've generated. It's a lot of garbage data. And it flows through, and it's doing lookups. Now, what this component right here is doing is that if um, if it can't find a particular uh, location description, it says, okay, if it's, if, it's, uh, if it's null, if it comes down that I can't find this, just put unknown. It's a pretty common, this is a pretty common development pattern in, de in data warehousing, so that if you have uh, some data coming through, perhaps for your fact tables, and you're looking up to find the surrogate key for your dimension tables, uh, you can't find it, you would assign it to your unknown value. So. This link, this finished, and we had 25.1 seconds, 25.2, if we round that up. So going back, uh, we'll just close that, or stop the debug, and we'll execute something that's synchronous. There we are. Now, similar situation, only this is a better technique. Uh, instead of telling the lookup to redirect the row to a no lookup output, I'm telling it to ignore the failure. And this is really a better technique, particularly as I mentioned in the fact loads, because typically in a fact load you're going to have multiple, you know, several uh, dimension keys that you're going to look up, and so you'll go through several of these lookups, bang, 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 and if and if in the if I follow the pattern of the other one where I'm redirecting, doing a lookup, going back, I'm going to be doing constantly doing those these uh, union all alls to get the data back. Together, so that's the union all is a uh, semi. Uh, it's an asynchronous transformation, and it's going to slow things down. So let's see if this thing made a liar out of me. 
uh, let's look at the progress. 22 seconds. So, so uh, I've seen it go up and down. That's uh, I don't know what that works out to be. It's probably five, five to ten percent improvement, uh, depending on your hardware and depending on the situation. You will get better performance. I have seen this, particularly if you're repeatedly doing that in a in fact load, dramatic. Uh, dramatic is probably too strong, but substantial performance gains. Okay, let's go back to Mr. Slide Deck. Okay, so as I mentioned before, data flow transformations. We have synchronous and asynchronous transformations. On the left-hand side are the good guys, basically. I, 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 actually, I shouldn't say it that way. But <laughs> generally speaking, you want to leverage the synchronous. You're, you're safer leveraging the synchronous transformations than you are the asynchronous transformations. Um, the asynchronous sides you have are basically subdivided into two more categories, semi-blocking and fully blocking. As I mentioned before, the sort just makes sense. It has to have all the data before it can do a sort and move on. Um, aggregations is another one. That's the, basically your group by functions in T-SQL. Um, uh, so, and then semi-blockings are, for instance, the merge join, which we'll be looking at a little bit, pivoting and unpivoting, um, union all, which I just mentioned. Um, but it's all not quite so black and white because synchronous transformations also have some pretty nasty ones down here. Uh, particularly the OLEDB command. It, it is a synchronous, but it's a row-based trans transaction. And so it's for all of the DBAs and database developers out there, it's very similar to when uh, some code cowboy comes to you with his, his fantastic new store procedure. And the first thing you do uh, when you look at it is find out that um, he has used some sort of cursor. I, I think we've all had that experience. And after you yourself off the ceiling, you have to counsel them on set-based operations. But that's what an OLEDB uh, command does. It, row by row, it's going to execute an update state. And it's um, slowly changing dimension, which we'll touch upon in a little bit, also leverages that. And it is itself a synchronous uh, row-based transformation. So it uses OLEDB commands, and it itself is a little slower. Um, OK. Uh, well, I'll just quickly look at this one. How many execution trees do we have here? So um, let's just kind of count them like that. So here's a source. And by the way, the sources are considered to be asynchronous. So we're going from asynchronous to asynchronous. So we go, whoops. Let's see here. Let's try this again. OK, so here we go. So we should, I think I see one, uh, two, three, four. Five, six, six. Um, so you can see they can kind of spring out of control pretty quickly. And remember, every time you go to a new execution tree, it's moving, it's creating a new buffer. It's moving data to that buffer. 